Hello, Strategic Management students. Fred David here again with you in Chapter 6. You know, just uh, we've completed Part 1, Part 2 in our discussion of Chapter 6 here in the 17th edition of our Strategic Management text. We're actually on page 180 here. If you have, if you have your book with you, good turn to page 180. I think this is where we ended up uh, on our last uh, Chapter 6 segment there where we were talking about the BCG matrix and the IE portfolio matrix recall. This time we're going to focus uh, on the grand strategy matrix. I see this on page 180, and we're going to look at the QSPM in a, in a moment. And then we're going to look at recommendations in terms of what, what would be appropriate expense costs for various recommendations. So those are three major topics we'll look at here on this segment. But if you don't mind, let's begin on page 180 with the grand strategy matrix here. Notice Notice on the bottom of page 181, actually, the grand is a four cell matrix. The strategic planning template that you're familiar with now or you using will, will generate this for you uh, after you put in the appropriate information based on your research and understanding now of your company, its major rival firms and, and its overall industry. But notice there are two axes on this grand matrix on page 181 at the bottom rapid market growth, slow market growth. What we're talking on that vertical axis, again, is gonna be the average annual increase in revenue among firms in a particular industry. So it's, it's very analogous to the BCG matrix. Remember the vertical axis, industry growth rate? <clears throat> it's gonna be the same thing here. And that's gonna be the average annual increase in revenues or decrease for all firms in the industry. Now, so what would be a natural question here on the grand matrix on page 181 is, well, what would be rapid and what would be slow? You remember we've discussed in our earlier segments that shareholders pretty much expect or if not demand at least a 5% top line and bottom line growth annually in top line being revenues and bottom line being net income growth annually one year to the next. If, a, if you can't generate that with a strategic plan or on an ongoing basis, then you start to lose stakeholders, we'll say, uh, suppliers, distributors, creditors, customers, employees, and particularly investors. They, they need, to, need to see the 5%. So on the grand matrix on page 181, let's use 5% as the cutoff there. If, if, you're, if your company is, if the industry that your company is competing in, if it's, if it's, showing five or more percent annual increase average growth in revenues, you're going to want to locate your, your company in, in the upper half of this quadrant on page 181. Now notice what the horizontal axis is on the in the grand matrix on page 181. We're talking a weak competitor versus a strong competitor. And here we're talking, of course, about market share, product quality, customer loyalty, those, those kinds of things, as well as as well as return on investment, earnings per share, all kinds of financial variables. So based on that set of, of variables, would you consider your company that you're working on developing a strategic plan, would you consider them to be a weak competitor versus a strong competitor? So you're gonna make a choice on that. And so based on your choice on the, your, your arrive on terms of a, uh, the vertical and the horizontal axis here, you'll locate your company in one of these quadrants. So I see that there are four quadrants, quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four on page 181. Notice if you ultimately decide your company's in quadrant one, there's a set of recommendations there generally that have worked well historically for companies in, located in that quadrant. It's led by market development. And you know what that is, that's geographic expansion. So what this matrix on the bottom of 181 is saying, this grand matrix, is if, if you decide your company is in quadrant one, and these strategies are in rank order of attractiveness here, please know that, then geographic expansion of some type is, is probably going to be best, at least historically that's worked work best for companies, whether that's expanding into new cities or states or countries or continents, whatever is appropriate for your, your company, followed by market penetration, and then followed by product development. So these were generic strategies, you understand, that were terms that we introduced in chapter five. But for a particular company, remember, we're going to be a lot more specific than this. We're not just going to leave it at market development or geographic expansion. We're going to say for your audience, whoever is reading your project and your set of recommendations, what particular countries and why, you, you understand. But, but if, you, if you decide your company presently is in quadrant two, there's, there's a, another set of strategies there versus quadrant three, 
quadrant three. Notice quadrant three. That would be where you you decide your company is indeed a weak competitor and they're in a slow market growth. What's what do you what what probably do you want to recommend there? Some some form of retrenchment, some form of diversification, perhaps divestiture, or even even possibly liquidation. So this is going to be helpful for you ultimately deciding on what strategies to recommend going forward. So we, we won't blindly go with the answer we get from the GRAND or the SPACE or the SWAT or the BCG or the IE, but together using the five matching tools, you understand, then we'll sit back and decide, okay, now given that information and analysis, what would we, what do we think best for our, our strategic plan going forward in terms of recommendations? So that's that's a that's a one an, an easier one. The, the tip will do this for you. There's really no numbers really to calculate on the grand strategy matrix. So I'm looking forward to seeing one of those in your project file next time I see it. Folks, remember at the beginning of this chapter, there are three stages here. We have the input matching and decision stage. I see on page 182, it's beginning to talk here about the decision stage. And by decision, we're saying, well, among all these strategies that could benefit the firm, and there could be many of them, how do we distill that down into the, let's say a set of 10, that would be what we want to bet our house on and our employees' pocketbook and billfolds on. What do we really want to do going forward? So the decision stage, and we have one analytical tool in the literature that companies are widely using now. It's called the QSPM, Quantitative Strategic Planning Matrix. And the template is going to develop this for you. It's going to pull over your external and internal factors that you earlier developed to be most important. I see the general format for QSPM on page 183. If you're kind of able to follow along with me here on 183, notice down the left column there, we have a key, key external and key internal factors. These, these will be identical to what you earlier determined in having your comprehensive strategic planning project file. Remember there, AQCD, we had 10 opportunities, 10 threats, 10 strengths, 10 weaknesses arrayed in our matrices from high weight to low weight to reveal the relative importance of them, you understand? But what's new in the QSPM that I see is gonna be actually the horizontal the horizontal material at the top of that figure, uh, table six four, because we're gonna have the same weight column, the, the temple will bring over the same weight column, folks, that you earlier determined to be most appropriate for both your EFE and your IFE matrix. But you see here, now we're gonna to begin to look at, well, let's look at strategy one, two, and three. And we're gonna compare strategy one, two, and three among each other based on these factors down the left column. So theoretically or conceptually, I think this is a tremendously effective decision-making tool. Do you, do you see this? We're gonna, we're gonna rate strategy one, two, and three on a one to four scale, depending on how attractive is it based on, versus based on these factors down the left column. So that's kind of what's going on. That's the general format of a, of a QSPM on page 183. And we've got the steps listed for you on page 183 and over to 185, the actual steps, one, two, three, four, five, six in developing a QSPM. Well, let's look, let's look on page 184 at the QSPM for the sample, sample there in table of six, five on page 184. So we're, again, we're dealing with a small computer store who recently used this QSPM analysis. They were, they were considering building, they're, they're considering buying new land and building a new store. Do you see that as strategy one? And versus, should we just fully renovate our existing store? So anytime you're at a crossroads in, in life or a company's at a crossroads in terms of a, a, a major strategic decision, a QSPM is fantastic to set it up that way. You, you put the two strategies across the top, you put your key, key external and internal factors down the left column, and then you, you compare the two strategies going row by row. So what we're doing a QSPM folks, we're gonna work row by row work row by row, and we're going to ask ourselves on each row, well, would strategy one or strategy two be, be best, be better, uh, given that first factor? So I see with regard to the population of the cities growing 10%, that's the first factor. Whoever did this one gave a AS score, that's attractiveness score of a four uh, for buy new land and build a new store versus an AS uh, attractiveness score two for strategy number two. You see that? So they're thinking based on that first factor, actually this business, instead of fully renovating, 
They should indeed buy the land and build a new store. But so we're going to work row by row all the way down this thing and see what it ends up. If you look at the bottom of page table six five, you can see that ultimately, ultimately based on a, a total, a, some total attractiveness score down there of three point six four, it looks like this this business indeed based on this analysis should should indeed buy the new land and build the new larger store because the other the the fully renovate. Total, total score at the bottom there is a 3.27. So, so as I look down that table six, five on page 184, I see sometimes I see a blank there. I can't recall if the template puts a blank or a zero, but that blank is indicating that the factor on the left is not impacting the choice, not impacting this choice between this, these particular two strategies. Now we just don't throw it away. Uh, it's still included here because if we looked at a different set of strategies, that, that factor, let's say factor number four, vendors average six new products per year, that, that might come into play. So, so it's still an important factor, but it's just on this, these two strategies here, it didn't really impact the choice. So we can put a dash. So we don't, we don't force numbers into this thing. Most QSPMs I see folks, please know, half of the rows will be just a dash or zero, zero. And never would you rate one and not the other strategy. Notice, notice on page 184, if you rate one strategy, you're, you're saying that impact, it's impacting the choice. So you rate both strategies. And I've seen numerous QSPMs folks with up to 10 strategies where the rate, the AS scores can range from one to 10. But this one on page 184, and really the one I expect to see in your project file, you can just use two strategies, okay? Now that doesn't mean we're just gonna recommend one thing for your company to do for the next three years. Please, please understand that. I just wanna see, see that you are, have good confidence in using a QSPM. In fact, our recommendations, folks, I'd like every project file to include 10 recommendations with an associated cost. And we're gonna talk about that in just a second here. But the QSPM analysis will give you some in, insight on, on what would be something particularly to do. Now look folks, I wouldn't blindly go by the answer you get here. One of the beautiful things about a QSPM, it lets you know the magnitude of the difference in terms of how, how more attractive is one strategy versus another one. I mean, we're looking at a 3.64 versus a 3.27 on page 184. That thing could have been, could have been a, a, a 3.9 versus a, a, a one, a 1.1. 1 .1. So we, we get a sense of the relative attractiveness of one strategy versus another. And that's very helpful information for us before we bet our, our, our house pocketbooks and billfolds, you understand on some strategic plan or game plan. So, so the QSPM is just another tool. It's really the only decision-making tool we have presented here in, in chapter six. So I'll, I wanna see, I'll need to see you develop one of these just using the template and, uh, and inserting the numbers inappropriate based on your understanding of your company and your industry at this point in the course, which is probably pretty extensive. So that'd be, that'd be fantastic. But, but the QSPM, I like to use it. There's, I see on page 186, uh, there are many positive features and limitations of the QSPM. So companies are widely using this. You could even use it on an individual basis. If you're deciding between full-time work versus graduate school or something like that, you could set those two strategies up with your, your strengths and weaknesses down the left, your personal strengths and weaknesses on an individual basis and opportunities and threats facing you and work that out. So this is a very effective tool, particularly when you're at a crossroads as a company or as an individual. So folks, let's, um, let's continue on on page 186 here. I see a section here that starts off saying how to estimate costs associated with rec recommendations. So I, I'm going to need you to ultimately include in your project file 10 recommendations for the company over to occur over the next three years and a cost associated with each one of them. So you, you're going to then therefore face questions such as, well, if I'm going to suggest building a new manufacturing plant, let's say in South America, how much does the new manufacturing plant cost? How much is, and that's so, so that's what I'm addressing that type of issue here on page 187. In fact, uh, number one uh, suggestion I have on page 187, if you are gonna build a new manufacturing plant, you could look at a, on a per square, per square foot basis. You see there, I put there, um, I got 40 million based on $400 per square foot to build a plant times 100,000 square feet 
the plant. I mean, how large is the plant? Is it 10,000 square feet or is it 100,000 square feet? So we could do it on a square foot basis. So we're going to determine costs associated for every recommendation and then add it up to get some total. And that total is going to be very important in this project file because I'm going to need you to reassure your colleagues and so forth that the, whatever that total amount of dollars needed is, that your company can actually get that amount of money. I mean, a company likely can't take on a trillion dollars. Well, how much can they take on? So we're going to look at EPS, EBIT analysis and other, other issues like that in later chapters, particularly chapter eight to determine if the firm should use debt versus equity to raise the capital needed. But here for recommendations, for your recommendations page, I would I do need to see some, some total. So what, let's say on number two on page 187, let's say you were gonna suggest over three years that your company open 200 new retail stores. Open 200 new retail stores. Well, how much does the retail store cost? Well, I got, I've given you some, some methodology there to perhaps estimate this. Estimations, I'm comfortable with estimations. I am not comfortable with, with wild guesses. I am not comfortable with vagueness, but I am comfortable with reasonable estimations here. So I'm seeing there mid page 187, you could do 300 million, 300 million total. How do you get that? Well, 200 stores times 10,000 square feet per store times $150 per square feet you understand? You just multiply that across, you end up with 300 million. Okay, so I'm going to be good with you. You, you, you show me how you get your numbers and, and let's see if it looks halfway reasonable. So something like that. What about if you were going to hire 100 new sales salespersons over the course of the next three years? Well, maybe that's one of your recommendations in terms of market penetration. You're going to add, as I see number three on page 187, number three, hire 100 new sales reps. Well, I got 7.5 million for that. I did 100 sales reps times, let's say a $75,000 annual salary as a, as an estimate, that would be 7.5 million. So you understand what I'm saying? No matter what you're recommending, I want you to see if you can develop an estimated cost because we're going to add these totals up on a recommendation page to get some total amount needed. Probably going to be around 500 million, let's say for your company. And then I'm going to later in the project need you to tell us where well, should we go to the bank and get it? Or should we issue stock and equity to get it, to get that 500 million? I don't think we always walk into the bank to get it. So, or do we do 50, 50, 20, 80 or whatever. So we're gonna use the template to, to help us on that decision. But, but we need to know first and foremost, a set of recommendations um, and, and what the total cost is it would be expected for those things over the course of the next three years. So, so that's a key page in this, in this text because it's so important in the project file, the recommendations page, just page 187. So I want you to keep referring back to that. And of course, I mentioned um, earlier in other segments and even in this segment, use the, use the Sanderson Farms example uh, case provided there on the author website. Look at, look at what Rebecca did for her recommendations, how she summed it up, added it up. Now the template is not really gonna prompt you to enter in some recommendations. So that's one thing the template's not gonna do there. But as soon as you do that in your Word file and have a, a grand total amount of money your capital needed, then the template's gonna jump right in again and, and help you decide whether to use equity or debt in raising, raising the amount of money needed, raising the capital needed. So, so this chapter six, there's a lot in chapter six, a lot going on here. QSPM analysis we just looked at, and the grand strategy matrix we just looked at. This idea about developing a set of recommendations based on the SWAT, BCG, I space, grand is exceptionally important, along with an estimated cost for each one. That's kind of where we're going. And I'm confident that following this process, you, you will develop a strategic plan for your company that will indeed lead it to success and prosperity. It'll go a long ways towards doing that for sure, rather than just using more uh, see the pants or informal or subjective approaches to this. Strategic planning, in my view, folks, is really as much a science as it is an art on this because lots of matrices analyses are, are very important to help include and, and perform to help us make a right, the right decision on this. So I appreciate you listening in with me here on, on chapter six. That's gonna finish up what, I'm, what we're gonna do on chapter six in terms of the concepts, tools, techniques here. 
our next segment I'm going to start with you here this afternoon or in the morning will be on chapter seven. We're, you know, the first six chapters of this book are on formulating strategies, what it takes to really develop a develop and formulate an outstanding strategic plan. In chapter seven, we're going to move on into implementing, particularly marketing and management issues. Chapter eight will be finance and accounting issues related to implementing strategies. So, so we're going to be looking at three stages, as you know, formulating chapters one to six, implementing strategies, chapter seven and eight, and then evaluating strategies will be chapter nine. So I hope you have a good day today. Take care. It's good to see you. Thanks for joining in with me here. Chapter six. We'll see you soon. I'll be looking at a chapter seven. Take care.